McCord Maker, five-star recruit, is committing to an HBCU. If McCord doesn't do well, it's a disaster. I was going to the NBA, then COVID happened. That just killed everything. I haven't seen my family since 2016, but it's a sacrifice I'm making to get to the NBA. Hi, McCord. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Um, I guess, like, one of the first questions I want to ask is, like, there has to be a study on the pandemic and how it, you know, kind of changed the direction of so many, I mean, so many students in general, but you could do a microcosm of just like how athletes were ready to go a certain direction and there's so much time in whether you think about Olympics or whatever, with athletes that in their careers, that had a pandemic change their career. Can you, can you, how was it like kind of kind of kind of like um being flexible and trying to figure out how to like do what your goals were with this big pandemic hitting you know the world of basketball um you know like, like you said hey, a lot of athletes i think i've learned how to operate at times of uncertainty um you know it, it did happen it, it hit me hard I, I lost the basketball season a very important one actually um but it's just the more thing is uh, i've learned how to adapt to situations that are always kind of sticky or you know more so kind of hard and you know, i feel like in life you have to face something like that you got to face some adversity and it was tough um it was tough i would say it was tough but i handled it pretty well and i'm just moving on to the next thing now and it didn't only hit athletes um it hit people lost their homes people are extremely sick in the hospitals um you know in comas you know and stuff like that life support and losing their jobs so i feel like that's what they hit really first you know it really hit those people who lost their jobs and lost loved ones so that was it i feel like there's like always this desire for this connection between African Americans and uh, people of, you know, different African nations, whether it be Sudanese or Nigerians or South Africans or, or, or whomever. And um, I wonder like how going to HBCU help, did it, did it help like bend this, not, not that there's this fence, but did, was there any like understanding that you got more of like African Americans as to different people, what people diff deal with as black around the world, as being uh, African descendants around the world. Did you get any particular like uh, insight at a, at a historically black college and university that you didn't have before? Um, just the HBCUs are, are, are rich in history with the African Americans that come through there. I know I learned a lot about that. Uh, I've learned who went there and who paved the way for a lot of t a lot of things that are happening now in the entertainment world, in the politics world, and you know, in just life in general. But besides that, you know, it's relatively the same. You know, black people, you know, we just we're all one. You know, African descent. We all we all it all traces back to Africa, and and, and to people to realize that is great. I feel like I feel like on this on this continent we don't really understand what happened between um, all the conflict in in Sudan and just as a you know just just as a descendant of uh, a, a, a Sudanese parents and everything else and being born there can you can you like help make it like like fifth grade for us like what like why has it, there been so much conflict can you simplify it you know a little bit of, uh, of the i'm sure complicated history of uh the sudanese conflict uh yeah there's a lot in south sudan the conflict is basically over the land you know over pride um over oil over money you know we have a lot of resources ivory gold silver you know things like that you know we're a rich we're a rich country so um you know things like that do happen and, and it's on us to come together and to collaborate no matter what you know tribe you are or, or where you're from or how you speak or what color you are you know it's on us to come together as a nation and and, and build that because once we do that we'll be the leaders of the world it's just it's, it's just right there you know our oil you know it's just right there we're so rich so 
it's just it's only it's only a matter of time that that happens and i'm um you know i just wish it, it does how important was it for you to have you know um a, a predecessor your brother don maker like become internet viral become known as this un, you know athlete that came from abroad and, and came here and made a big impact and become you know like this high draft pick how important was it for him to like break down those fences or whatever for you to make that dream like because i know it's a lot of people that have so much potential but it's so hard to reach that potential because a lot of times they don't believe in their own potential but to see uh, a, a maker make it you know um like how, how important was that for you to believe that you know that was something that was attainable for you also yeah uh i would say yeah thon did he did spark that belief in a lot of south sudanese kids in australia um when he got drafted that just it, it, it gave him an edge it made it it made it feel like it, it is possible because most times when people think about that dream going to the nba over here for south sudanese kid is like okay i can make it but they just don't see the route happening or over it coming to life so when it did happen you know, it did, it did give a lot of hope, and, and I, I've learned a lot of things from his, you know, his ups and downs, and I've just learned how to adapt to things um, by the fly. So, you know, I, I have learned a lot from him being in the NBA game and having to stay ready and, and things like that. How, how important was it for the Smith? Is it the Smith family, right, that, that took you guys in, right? Um, how important was it for them to be like really culturally adept to what was going on in South Sudan and, and, and where uh, you guys were coming from to make you guys feel like, you know, like more than the more than learning the game, somebody that really respected the, the culture and your history. Like how important was that for you guys to feel comfortable enough to excel in your lives as athletes and students? Um, yeah, you met, you, you watched the doc, Edward Smith, um, you know, he moved to Australia real early and he had a, a lot of South Sudanese players. So he understood the culture, you know, um, he's the African descent also. So it's, it's almost similar. We, you know, we have the same beliefs and the same morals and the same motives, good intentions. So it, it wasn't really too hard for us today. Um, besides that, I, I moved to Australia when I was 11 months. So I spent the majority of my living there. You know, I only got a chance to visit South Sudan in 2013 for two months. And, you know, I wish I could visit more longer, but my schedule is just so busy. But besides that, you know, it was free fun. I never really thought about that. You know, they're good people. So what, what's, you know, there's been like a, a wave now, especially since Coach Deion Sanders has went to Jacksonville State University. We've seen a lot of football players um that could normally commit to ohio state or auburn or georgia alabama commit to like historically black colleges um i don't know if you know I, I, well i'm sure you do because i'm sure they, they they've told you I, I don't know if you went into it really knowing the impact that your decision will make for athletes of the future but do you think that if more to more of the athletes that were, you know, highly recruited blue chip athletes decide to attend some of these historically black colleges and universities, they would bring more, uh, both more attention, uh, television deals, uh, you know, uh, you know, profits to, to it as a, as a business of sports. Do you, do you think that would be like uh, impactful for more people to follow in your footsteps to say, I don't just have to go to Kentucky or Duke or UNC. I could go to a Howard or a Southern University or Morehouse or FAMU or, or whatever and support some of these schools that um, have always supported uh, people that look like me through history. Yeah, I think my thing was athletes realizing that you don't have to go to the schools you mentioned in order to get to where you want to get. You know, if you're good enough and you trust your work, I mentioned like repeatedly on the, in the documentary that, you know, wherever you are, the people that are recruiting or, or maybe looking at you will make those those decisions to have you on a team. 
um, a professional team will make that decision if you're good enough. So I think, um, you know, I brought up a lot of awareness to the situation. You see what Coach uh, Deion Sanders is doing at Jackson State, which is incredible. Um, he's bringing a lot of awareness to HBCUs. And, you know, this is going on. The NBA All-Star, the theme is HBCUs. They're showcasing, showcasing their artist ability and, you know, their creative thinking ability. Um, you know, it's just, it, it, it's just a lot of, you know, a lot of profit did happen off that commitment. Um, and I'm uh, and I'm proud of it, and I wish it, it's going to continue to go on more. It'll be, the more people know about HBCUs and what's what's there. Uh, I guess I guess about as I wrap up, I, I got to know. I know you you had to to shorten that season and as a Bison because of uh, that that groin injury, but um, like how disappointed or how how much were you looking forward to being able to be out there for a full season and turn that team. I believe they were like one in fifteen before you got there or something like that. Um and have like have like a season and turn that around. Oh man, it's just it was tough because I I did get hurt and I was out for two weeks with a groin injury. But then two weeks later I was cleared to play. Um I wanted to play because we had a we had a good team. I, I was confident that we would have wanted me I, and went to the NCAA tournament. That's why I was just so mad that we didn't have a basketball season. Like, I wish we'd, we'd, uh, we'd have a season and, and, and competed all the way through. But it's just, it's just one of those things that leaves you speechless. Like, when you hear the news that your season is canceled, it's like, you know, you've been practicing this whole time, putting in work this whole time, and then you can't even get a season. So that was, one of, that was like one of the biggest things I had to just, you know, go over and overcome. You know, it, it was just real tough. Your, your dream and the decisions you made, I, I'm cheering for you. Um, I, I mean, I know we could use we are here in LA right now for the Lakers or the Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, wherever you end up landing uh, professionally, whether it's in the NBA or overseas or whatever else, I'm cheering for you as a, as a person and I appreciate your time. And I can't wait to see you go ahead and do great and big things, man. Uh, thank you, Jamal, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for the interview.